welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. So Angie, thank you for taking the time and doing this podcast interview with me. Thank you for having me. You didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I've said I that with a couple of you. Like, you're my closest friends. You yeah. don't really get a choice in the matter. You just get to be interviewed. I'm just lucky I get to see you today. Thank you. I thought um, in this podcast, it would be really cool for us to talk about a little bit about your business background because you have such a strong business background in entrepreneurship in particular. Um, but I want to start out with, I think the thing that you, or I know, I shouldn't say I think, I know the thing that you're most proud of and the thing that I've learned so much from you in, which is you are a total mom all the time and you've raised three amazing, amazing men. They're not boys anymore. They're men. Um, and yet you've done it alongside some really spectacular careers but the focus has always, always been your children. And I've watched that. I've had the, the good fortune to watch that over the years. And um, our podcast is for moms that are aspiring to six figures, already at six figures. And you've just done that with such grace that um, I would love for you to talk about it. Well, I really have made motherhood my career. And Thank you. I really have made motherhood my career. I graduated from the University of Southern California in their business school, from their business school. So I'll say, let me start that again. I really have made motherhood my career, so thank you. I went to college um, and graduated with a degree from the University of Southern California in business. And I was fortunate enough to be accepted into their entrepreneurial program. So I knew from a very young age that I wanted to have my own business. I also knew I really wanted to be a mom. And I was fortunate enough to have three wonderful sons by the time I was 30. And at the time, my husband's career started to flourish and his career uh, really forced him to travel. And we decided that one of us really had to be present all mm -hmm. the time and be kind of on call. Um, and that was going to be me. Um, we were also young and I really needed to work, um, to be able to provide the life and the lifestyle and the education and the opportunities that we wanted to be able to, um, share with the boys. So, um, I, as I look back on it now, they're all in their twenties and they all have graduated from college and they all are working and they're all happy. And as you know, Heidi, you've spent time with them. They're amazing. They're amazing and they're hysterical and mm -hmm. they were a lot of work. <laughs> yes, I've seen that part too. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it was absolutely a joy. I've thoroughly enjoyed being a mother from the day they were born until now. Um, but it was hard and I, we were talking about, our family was talking about this earlier this week that, you know, economic reasons and family, you know, challenges and moves and, you know, mm -hmm. all those types of things come into play when you're raising a family. And I also needed to bring in an income. Um, so I was grateful that I had some really nice opportunities, some of them that I created for myself. And then other times just got, you know, kind of the right place at the right time and was aware. Um, so, and it's really paid off now because as I look back on it and how I did so enjoy running a business from home. And I was talking with my middle son, Christian this week. And he said, as he's in the corporate world now, and he, he actually said, you know, I followed dad in his career and he's done really well. And I've learned a lot from him, but my day to day activity and how I work from home, particularly now I learned from you. And I think that you working from home, you really taught us as even as kids, and maybe we didn't really even know it, how to work in a remote environment, which is, mm -hmm. you know, all of them are doing right now. And that's been, I said, really? And he goes, he said, yeah. He said, it really helped a lot. And as I think about it, I learned a lot from you just by watching how you were able to 
kind of work within the nooks and crannies. And mom, I never really even knew you were working. You just were busy and I was, and you were happy. And I think now that they're grown and I look at the next season in my life, that's what I'm doing now is really being able to help other women, other moms be able to do, you know, be that, be a total mom and, Mm -hmm. you know, have your own business at the same time. So, yeah. And you're spectacular at that. (laughs) No, it's true. I've learned so much from you about motherhood and the way to manage things. And as I said before, the grace that you carry through all of it is really amazing. So some of the, some of the pieces of wisdom that I think would be really amazing for our audience to hear is how do you, how did you manage that? Right. I mean, you had very successful businesses in kind of different arenas Mm -hmm. over the years, but you always did it around the boys. So Mm -hmm. Tell me about what does a calendar look like for a mom that is, has three kids under the age of 10 that are in every sport imaginable, because I know your boys and they were super competitive in mm-hmm. sports and education, and yet you maintain these, these careers that were not easy, honestly, mm-hmm. and you did it very well. What, is, what does that look like? Yeah, so when you're raising children, you find out quickly that if they, if they're smart and if they're passionate and if they're outgoing, there's a lot of activities Mm -hmm. that happen. I remember a mom that had older kids told me it was Saturdays and we had soccer and baseball and piano lessons and all these different types of things. And she gave me the advice. She said, this is what I do every Saturday morning. I get a three by five card and I write down everything we're going to do, two of them. And I give one for me and one to their dad. And then we get through the day. And I remember thinking, okay, I've got that. So part of what I think I did, and I've, you and I have talked about this before, I really am a good copier. You know, I really look to people who have been successful, whether it's organizing a, you know, Saturday activities for three or four kids Mm -hmm. to how people are able to work from home around their kids' schedule to how people, women particularly are able to handle adversity, you know, and, and thrive and succeed even when times are challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started writing everything down. We, everybody who knows me knows I have lists all the time. Yes, you do. <laughs> I, there's just something really fulfilling about being able to cross something off the list that you did it. Um, so I think that's really important. I would just sound so silly, but the night, every single night I would print out kind of my calendar for the day or I, you know, I liked now I've gotten to the habit of where I would really like to write everything down. I have a morning routine. I have the activities for the day. And then I also did a couple of things that really did help me is where I separated. Sometimes I think women and moms particularly wake up and you think, oh my gosh, there's so much I have to do. How in the world am I going to get all of this done? Mm -hmm. I actually said that to my grandmother one time when the kids were little and she was visiting me. She was in her 90s and I looked at her and I said, we called her mama. And I said, mama, oh my gosh, how am I going to get everything done on my list? And she looked at me and she said, well, honey, why in the world would you want to get everything done? you wouldn't have anything to do. And there was just such simple wisdom in that (laughs) to really just, I thought she's right. I'll just get as much as I can done today and I'll get the rest of it done tomorrow Mm -hmm. and, and really try to enjoy life as well. Um, but to separate it, categorize it, you know, I had a personal list and I had a business list. And sometimes if, if I was a team liaison or team mom for, or, you know, president of another foundation for the schools, because I really always look to give back as well. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, those were sometimes the hardest jobs um, to do, but I would really try to be really specific. And then there's a couple things that I learned from, I would say mentors, people who I've studied. Number one is really picking, you know, the five most important things during the day. And I would circle those. And I thought if I, at the end of the day, how do I want to feel? I want to feel that I've accomplished those. So if I can get these five things done in the personal um, category and these five things done in my business, then I'm going to feel good. So you, I think it's really important to have that sense of accomplishment and to teach your children that as well. So that's something mm-hmm. that really helped me. The other part that, that I learned is to, I heard the phrase, make sure that you have intentional gray area on your calendar. And that has been something that 
whether that meant I had to get up a half an hour early or if it meant I stayed up a half an hour late later, um, that was really important. And even sometimes during the day to, to take a lunch break that sometimes as moms and running our own businesses, we don't. Mm -hmm. And the older I am, the older I've, I've gotten, um, the more important I realize that is. So those yeah. are a couple of the things that I think are really powerful. Now I think everyone calls that self-care, right? Mm -hmm. You see a lot on self-care, but it's true. It's we as women give and give and give. And I, and I've watched you do this over the years, but you have to refill yourself right. or you can't, you just have nothing to give. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't take very long. That's the other thing I found yeah. too. You know, even if you have a cat nap for 10 minutes or if you drive to see the ocean or Go get a nice latte. You go get a nice latte with your girlfriend, <laughs> virtually. <laughs> <laughs> but it really does really make an impact. The other part too, the other part that I'm really passionate about, and you know this as well, is really trying to be health, healthy mm -hmm. and to exercise and eat well. And most of the time we do a pretty good job of that. But that was so important. I learned that early on, raising the boys. They were all... They all, they pushed, they taught me a lot about pushing themselves to mm -hmm. a higher level, um, both physically as well as with their studies, um, and their creativity. And I learned qu quickly that I was going to have to be on my A game as far as that goes. So lots of early morning and late night meal prep, mm -hmm. um, lots of planning on the weekend for the week. Um, and it just, if I could get on top of my game on Sunday night, the rest of the week went really smoothly mm -hmm. as far as planning out the meals. Yeah. Your boys are challenging in a good way. Mm -hmm. Very challenging because they want to excel, which right. I've watched push you over the years, yeah. which I loved that. Yeah. So I remember thinking when they were little, all under 10 and all kind of looking up at me, like, how are we going to do this? Because clearly I was going to be orchestrating their lives at least right until they were young adults. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, okay, I got myself into this. Now I'm going to do a really good, good job. job. <laughs> and there was a piece in, I remember there was one day when they were little and I thought to myself, if I can leave this world with three really good men, then I've done a good job. Mm -hmm. And that, that has really been the theme of my parenting, my life. Yeah. And, um, and you've done it. Thank you. So well, yes. Um, so a couple things, I think number one, I love you have a mantra that I'm going to throw out there. We you kind of stole a little bit of it from Nike, but <laughs> just do it and have fun with it, mm -hmm. which you say all the time. And I think in life you, you execute that very well. Okay. So it'd be fun. I think for you to talk a little bit about that. And then the second thing is, um, we have all, you know, seen some challenges and you've not only navigated those challenges very well, but you've also helped your, your three boys. And since we are talking to moms, maybe talk a little bit about how that mantra has played into navigating those challenges. Yeah. Thank you. So one of the blessings of being a mom is it's fun. Mm -hmm. And my boys are super fun. And um, I've learned that early on as well, that I, I'm, part of me is so structured and so disciplined and that I, they taught me how to play a lot. And I'm so grateful for that, you know, especially now. Um, and I do think, you know, you need to enjoy life and life is hard. You know, I've say, we've talked a lot about that life is long and complicated, particularly the last year, mm -hmm. you know, this has been really interesting. It's, I, this pandemic has impacted everyone yes. and from, you know, small children to elderly people and everywhere in between. And as a mom, I remember thinking I'm going to need to really really be on, like I said, my A game as far as how I'm going to help the boys to get through this next year. Um, I now am fortunate enough to have a beautiful daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. They were married right before the world shut down. So we were grateful to be able to celebrate their love for each other. And she's become an integral part of our family and she's super fun. So she's taught me a lot about playing and joyfulness and, um, and I, I'm so appreciate that, you know, about all the kids. So like I said, life is short you know, just do it and have fun with it. Um, I think that's so important. 
how I've been able to help them with it. I think they're helping us as me as well. But there's been a lot of, as hard as this year has been, there's, I've been so impressed with so many people and we'll talk about the boys and how some of their creativity, they've been able to use some of their creativity, mm -hmm. which has been kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so Christian started a podcast, you know, with a couple of his buddies um, mm -hmm. called The Wannabes. And it's kind of a wannabe sports talk sh show, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit irreverent sometimes and super fun. And they just had a great time. Like, hey, they, I, they he did some Zooms with all of his college buddies um, all across the country. And he's like, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do this if this hadn't happened. So there's some things like that that have been you know, a blessing. Charlie, my oldest son and Katie are, are actors and musicians and they've done some really in neat virtual shows and concerts and that are so much fun that they have thoroughly enjoyed. And it's been such a blessing for all of us. It is. It's yeah. been, it's fun. So there's different ways. Um, Scotty actually has graduated from college and started his career and has become very creative, utilizing resources and different ways of, of communicating with people. Mm -hmm. um, that has been fun. You know, we play a little bit more, you know, I played Scrabble the other night. I don't remember the last time I played Scrabble and Scotty said, we're gonna play a game tonight. And first I'm like, ah, I don't wanna play a game. It's like, yep, we're playing a game. And we played a game <laughs> and I, all of a sudden I got really competitive and all of a sudden, you know, he's winning and I'm not. And we just got the giggles and just had a great time. So mm -hmm. there's, there, there's some blessings, I think, that have come into really wanting to be able to have some more intimate and creative time. Mm -hmm. um, Isn't and, that such a great life lesson yeah. overall too, right? I think the so too. The challenging things bring blessings a it lot does. of times. Yeah. We've had Saturdays where, you know, when they're all in town, I'm so grateful that they still like to come home mm -hmm. and see mom. And that's, I feel I, that's where I'm my happy place is for sure. Um, and I think that has to do with the fact that they had a nice, they liked being home and, you know, we made a nice environment for them. And, and so when they come back, we can kind of have some, some laughs and, you know, throw the ball around, play a game, play music, mm -hmm. you know, cook together, which is, we like to do. So, you know, this, I ask everyone this question. Do you remember when you achieved six figures and what that felt like? I do. I thought about that question because I knew you were going to ask, ask me. I think that when it really hit me was when I saw that it was going to happen, mm. that there was, a, I thought, I remember when I started my business and it, I had a little tiny bit of success and then I had a little bit more success. And then I remember my dad called me and he said, honey, I think this is actually going to work. I think you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I'm going to do this. I said, let's go. And I just kind of set. So that was when I remember it was about five or six months, you know, kind of into getting really getting started. And I thought this is going to work and I'm going to figure out, I'm going to figure out how to do this. I'm going to help a lot of other people do it as well. Mm -hmm. So, and it was a feeling of, uh, a lot of pride, um, mostly peace yeah. and hope mm -hmm. that, you know, for what I could be able to also help other people to do as well. Mm -hmm. so. And book or podcast. Oh my gosh. Well, Heidi, as you know, a lot, a lot, all of the above, all of the above. I, I read constantly. Yeah, I'm a voracious reader. Yeah. I love reading. I love audiobooks. I love podcasts. Um, I really do love reading books. I think I usually when I'm going, my go-to if I'm relaxing mm -hmm. is historical fiction, you know, about strong women who've overcome adversity and are thriving. And what did they learn from that? Sometimes I think, okay, if they can, if they can get through that and do well, I can do anything. And that really inspires me if we look back into our history. Um, there's also, you know, different books, um, the four agreements mm -hmm. by Don Miguel Ruiz. Fantastic. That's really my go-to as far is as that the one you would recommend to most people. What would you recommend to most people? That. Yeah. I think it's a really simple book talks mm -hmm. about the four agreements to happiness. I remember, um, one of my mother's friends recommended it years and years ago. 
and I bought a little copy and I've given it out to almost everybody I know. Mm -hmm. So the part, there's just four simple lessons in that book. Yeah. Um, it's a great one. It's a great book. So what am I not asking? You have a lot of wisdom to share and we have, you know, the demographic of our listeners. It's women aspiring to six figures and then other women that are at six figures and, you know, maybe they're wanting to shift their focus. Maybe they're just listening in to hear women that are similar to them. Anything that you would want to share that we haven't touched on? Yeah, just maybe a couple things um, that I can share. I, my mom, one, of, one is what my mother said to me this week when I talked to her about mm -hmm. when I was going to be having this lovely conversation with you. And, and I, she said, there was something that she said that was really powerful. She said, your achievements and the success that you felt as a child really has helped you to be a more confident, comfortable woman. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've thought about that a lot. And I think that was really my passion for the boys. I really wanted them to, and why maybe I felt that I wanted to invest so much because my, I had a, I had wonderful parents who really helped me to pursue my dreams. Mm -hmm. My boys were, are smarter, more creative, you know, more ambitious than, than, and like I said, more fun. So I've learned so much from <laughs> them and they, but I think that that was really our passion was to really want to be able to help them to feel confident and have posture and successful so that, and, you know, and also how to overcome challenges because mm. we're all, we all face them. We all know that, you know, it's been, yeah. you know, been hit on the head with a frying pan about that this year, right. For all of us, but to, so that when challenges come, like what we're dealing with now, that they're able to just roll with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pick yourself up, brush yourself off and let's go. So there's that piece of it that I think look back on. And I think I, that was, I'm proud of us for being able to really be able to be there for the kids and, and help them to be more confident, self-assured, you know, kind men. Mm -hmm. So there's that part of it. The other part too, is, is when I think about women and I think as a mother, it's important for your kids to be able to see you work. I don't think there's anything wrong with hard work. I have done it all. I have, I've been a complete hundred percent stay at home mom. I've had to work full time in the corporate world. And then I've had my own businesses where I have more flexibility. Um, that's what I like the best is to be able to have the flexibility, but also to be able to have control of my time and, and my future as far as my income opportunities. If we're talking about making six figures so that I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, at this stage in my life, now that my kids, I guess, are officially grown, which is, I can't believe it, but they are, they're, they're all on their own and they're self-sufficient and they're doing beautifully well. I'm so grateful that I have a career that I enjoy and that I love and that I can be able to give back to people and help others. I think that when you get that for those of us that have, you know, worked a lot through our lives, you sort of get to a, a stage in your life and like, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. And it's a funny feeling being, um, having grown children. Mm -hmm. Um, it's wonderful to be able to have a career where I can still be able to help other people. And also it's wonderful for my kids to be, to know that, you know, mom's happy and mom's working and she's doing great. Mm -hmm. And again, I go back to that, just do it and have fun with it. And I look forward to being able to be a grandma someday. <laughs> and I look forward to you being a grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will definitely be very cute. We know that. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to do this. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you. So much fun. So much fun doing life with you. So. It is. Well, I appreciate you. You're an inspiration to all moms and women to really be able to follow your dreams and your passion. And sometimes it's a lot of hard work and a lot of grit <laughs> and a lot of resilience. Um, we know that. But it's a lot of fun yeah. too. And it's very rewarding. And it's so fulfilling. Yeah. 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 It's very fulfilling. So. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.